Hi everyone, we're going to be learning today about solving an equation for y. We're going to be taking equations that are in slope intercept form. And we talked recently about slope intercept form and that it in fact gives us a slope and an intercept. And we're going to make sure that they are in the correct form where y is by itself. So we have y equals mx plus b. Just a reminder, m is our slope, b is our intercept. Specifically, it is our y-intercept where we cross the y-axis. And today we wanna make sure that you can write an equation in slope-intercept form. So we're gonna get started with our first fact is that when we rewrite an equation in slope-intercept form, the equation of a line written in the form y equals mx plus b is said to be in slope-intercept form. To write an equation in slope-intercept form, you need to isolate y by using the properties of equality. So we know that the word isolate means make it by itself, put it alone, okay? So we're gonna do this using the properties of equality. We've actually done used these before we solved equations. So what we're doing is we're taking a skill with solving equations and we're gonna apply it to a linear equation with an X and a Y. We're gonna start with our first example, five X minus three Y equals six. So we're like, okay, this is a little bit different, not quite what we're used to. We're used to just x or just y. This time we have both and we're gonna get y by itself, okay? So to do this, we're gonna treat the x just like we would if it's a number. So we know we solved equations, we did parentheses, fractions, like terms, variables on both sides, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So we're gonna try the same kind of thought process here. Always check for parentheses first. I don't see any parentheses. Um, with these, we can usually clear fractions. You don't have to right away, that's your choice. But either way, we don't see fractions here. We don't see like terms. We, there's variables on both sides, but they are not the same variables. So we don't use that either. So we go straight into basically these four that we're gonna use most of the time. So undo addition, we have addition. We have a positive five X. So to undo that, I'm gonna subtract 5x from each side. So I do that, the 5x is canceled. This negative stays with the 3y. So I have negative 3y equals, and now this is where it is different than what we've done in the past. In the past, we've been able to combine these two things together. These are not alike. We cannot combine them together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write them side by side. I like to write the x first, x value first, because we're trying to get into y equals mx plus b, and that's how it comes in our equation. So I'm going to write negative 5x, and this is a positive 6, so plus 6. So now we've moved the 5x to the other side, so it's now negative 5x. We still want to isolate y. So we're not going to do that with subtraction. We're going to undo that by undoing multiplication. This is negative 3 times y. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. And I'm going to divide everything here by negative 3 on both sides. So because these we didn't simplify the negative 5x and the 6, we just write them side by side, and we divide each of them by 3. So here my negative 3s cancel. y is finally by itself negative five divided by negative three. And negative and negative is a positive. And we're just gonna leave this five thirds. We're not gonna change it to a, a decimal. We're not gonna change it to a mixed number because we know this is our slope. And the equation M is our slope. It's in front of the X. So this is our rise and our run. So we have five thirds X and then a positive six divided by negative three is negative two. So my equation in slope intercept form is y equals 5 thirds x minus two. And we love this because it lines right up with our equation. And I can say, okay, m is 5 thirds, b is negative two. And then you can come right over here to your graph and you can start at negative two. And then you can say, okay, if my slope is 5 thirds, I'm gonna rise five and run three. I rise one, two, three, four, five. I run one, two, three, and I put a point. Okay, if I want to do another point, I rise one, two, three, four, five, run one, two, three, put another point right there. And now I can graph my line and call it a day. So it's very, very important that you are familiar with how to write an equation in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is our favorite way to graph a line. 
There's also standard form and point slope, but we like slope intercept form the best because it is the easiest to use. I'm going to do three more examples with you. So we're going to do number two together. Find the slope and y intercept, and I'm going to take a step further, graph the line. So this problem, we have 2y plus 2 equals 4x. I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to draw my line, and I'm going to simplify this by getting y by itself. So look and say, okay, I have addition here. I have a plus 2, so I'm going to take 2 away from each side. I do that, I have 2y equals, now 4x minus 2 are not alike, so all we can do is write them side by side. And then I say, okay, I want y by itself, it's being multiplied by 2, so to undo that, I will divide by 2, but that means I have to divide everything by 2. I do that, I get y equals 4 divided by 2 is 2x, 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So my equation is y equals 2x minus 1. My slope, m, is 2. My y-intercept is negative 1. So if I go to my graph, I'm always going to start the y-intercept, so I'm going to go down to negative 1 on the y-axis. And my slope is 2, so it means a rise of 2, a run of 1. So I'm going to rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, rise to run one, okay? And then I'm going to just draw my line. I'm gonna draw my line straight through just like that. And that is how I write my equation in slope intercept form. You have to solve for y. It's like you're a detective trying to solve the mystery and get y by itself. All right, so we're gonna do one more. This one looks a little bit different. And this one has parentheses in it. So I told you, you don't always see parentheses, but sometimes you will. So we always take care of parentheses first. We know this from previous problems. So we're going to distribute the negative by because we know that parentheses means distribute. So I do this. I have negative 5x minus 10 equals y minus 2. All right. I want to get y by itself. I'm close to having y by itself. I just have to add 2 to each side. And now this is what gets a lot of you guys is as positives and negatives. We keep the negative 5x. As far as negative 10 plus 2, they have different signs. So we subtract and get 8. And we have more negative, so it says negative 8. So this side has a slope of negative 5, a y-intercept of negative 8. And I'm going to write the 5 over 1. And that means my rise is down 5 and my run is right 1. I start at negative 8, so I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to say, oh no, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, but there's no more graph. So my option is I can go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I go up 5, I have to go left 1. So we still have a negative slope. So I can also go up five, but then I still have to go left one. So I have a negative slope. I can go up one, two, three, four, five more, left one to have a negative slope, okay? So that is how we graph, we write equations in slope intercept form so we can graph them in slope intercept form. This is one of the number one skills you're going to need for ninth grade, for algebra one, and for the remainder of this class. We're going to practice this in our class sessions next week, um, but it's very, very important that you know how to do this. The last problem I'm going to show you is how do we write an equation from the graph? How do I write an equation from the graph? What do I do if I'm given a graph and I want to write the equation? This is actually easier than what we just did. Well, to write an equation in slope intercept form, we know it's y equals mx plus b, where m is my slope and b is my y-intercept. So we just need to identify the slope and y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the easiest thing. We just say, all right, here's my y-axis. Oh, look, here's where my line crosses the y-axis. So my y-intercept is positive one, two, three. So b must be three. As far as my slope goes, I need to pick good points on the line. The y-intercept's always a good point. I look here, I see another good point. So 
to get points. I say, all right, to get from the point furthest to the left, so to get from this point for this left to the one on the right, I can't go up. I'm going to go down and I'm going to go right. So my slope was down one, right one. So if it's down, it's negative one. If it's right, it's positive one. So negative one divided by one, which is just negative one. And that makes sense because this is the nice negative and it's a negative slope. We need to make sure those match. And then we just plug them in. We say, all right, y equals negative 1x plus 3. And a lot of times you'll see this written as just y equals negative x plus 3 because it's understood that the 1 is there. And here is my equation. So this is how you do writing equations, solving equations, and um, solving equations for y and graphing equations in slope intercept form. I hope this information helps. And if you have any other questions, please um, reach out to your teacher and make sure you get the practice done for this. That's very, very important. Have a great day, everybody.